the Seeds of Renewal patch is live. And last week, Blizzard dropped a massive list of hotfixes that could reshape the meta, which means it's time to reshape our tier list once again. On the DPS side, Rhett Paladins and Shadow Priests were the biggest winners, seeing massive buffs, and over the last few weeks, Boomkin has climbed up the leaderboards thanks to the discovery of a new button, allowing them to survive those nasty one-shots of Season 3. We also might be seeing the resurgence of some off-meta specs, with Mirrors working hard in the lab to develop Unholy DK right on time for this year's MDI. All of this and more is what we'll discuss in today's quick Mythic Plus meta update. And after this video is over, be sure to check out skillcap.com where we're continuing to roll out more courses for Season 3 Dungeons. Learn some of the hidden tech being used by players from Echo in quick and easy to follow guides that teach you tricks that you can implement immediately into your next run. And when this is combined with our epic damage courses that teach you advanced min-maxing tips, it's no wonder we offer a rank of guarantee, where we promise that you will gain at least 500 IO score while using our guides. So after this update, visit the links below with an exclusive discount code to sign up for skillcap.com today. Anyway, back to the video. Let's kick things off with range DPS, where a few specs will be shuffling around. First up is Balanced Druid, who will actually be moving up to the S tier since our last update. Obviously, the range meta has been quite stacked, with mages and augmentation evokers dominating the early season, but now being joined by a familiar face. Balanced Druids are putting out incredible numbers on big AoE pulls and have great synergy with Vengeance Demon Hunters due to stacking AoE stops. Of course, there are always questions about Boomkin's survivability, especially this season with the seemingly endless sources of one-shots, but bear form continues to be a relatively reliable, but otherwise janky option for surviving those big hits. So if you are out there wanting to climb, you will need to sacrifice a bit of DPS shifting into bear to avoid a one-shot. Anyway, as the top teams in the ladder are experimenting more with Balanced Druid, we feel confident in our decision to move them up to the S tier, even for high keys. Boomkins aren't alone in their ascent in the meta and are joined by Destro Warlocks, who are moving up to the A tier. On the damage side of things, Destro is a comparable but simply weaker version of Boomkin, doing amazing sustained AoE and decent single target damage. Destro also has some key advantages on some boss fights with Flashpoint, which will have very high uptime on fights like Phase 1 of Volcal or the entirety of the Eridicron encounter, where both of these bosses will remain above 80% HP. And just like always, Warlock is tanky enough on its own that it doesn't need any external defensive support, which is why it's becoming an appealing substitute for Evoker in higher keys. To wrap up our ranged winners, we have Shadow Priest, who received a pretty substantial list of damage buffs on January 23rd, which we think will be enough to bump them up to the A tier for the time being. With these buffs, Shadow Priest might become one of the lucky few DPS specs that can replace Augmentation Evoker in higher keys, where it might find success in comps with Balanced Druids and Mages while playing with a Vengeance Demon Hunter tank. The only elephant in the room is obviously Disc Priest, who is well suited in taking the healer slot in this type of comp as the honorary PI vendor for Boomkins. In general though, Priests are are actually pretty valuable this season simply because of the fort buff, allowing groups one additional tool for surviving this season's one-shots. Do we expect Shadow to suddenly take over the meta? Probably not, but it's definitely in a much better position and should be more competitive on the leaderboard. And with that, we have our updated tier list for patch 10.2.5. Balanced Druid and Destro Warlock are moving up a tier while the mage specs are being shuffled around once more. Fire continues to be the most popular meta pick, arguably having the most well-rounded damage kit compared to Frost and Arcane. While it does take some time for Ignite damage to ramp, Fire is excelling as a sustained damage pumper this season. Frost and Arcane Mage are still quite strong, but both are simply outperformed by Fire in the current meta. Arcane definitely has the edge over Frost when it comes to priority damage and massive burst, but it can feel a bit cooldown dependent. Moving on to Melee, we have two more specs getting shuffled around. First up, we're making the bold call to move Unholy DK up to the A tier. Now, I know what you're thinking. Skill capped is out of touch. And okay, maybe we admit this is a complete wild card, but currently, Mears is doing exceptionally well on the spec, pushing some impressive key levels on this off-meta pick. Does Mears have the luxury of playing with some exceptional players? Yes, but the key strengths of Unholy DK are worth considering. First of all, the spec is doing amazing numbers on bigger pulls, even being competitive with Balanced Druid. But unlike Druid, DKs are passively tanky and offer some really important utility this season with Anti-Magic Zone, which even has some key advantages over Zephyr when it comes to surviving the season's biggest one-shots. Do we expect DK to suddenly swarm the leaderboards? Probably not, but after a few buffs to the Legendary Axe, Unholy DK might actually be more than just an MDI gimmick. 
and is tanky enough to even replace augmentation in higher keys. Now, at this point, you might be wondering about Rhett Paladin, who are arguably seeing the biggest set of damage buffs on the melee side. Previously, we had Rhett Paladin on the A tier, but aren't quite ready to bump it up to S, so for the meantime, Rhett will definitely be a spec to monitor. If you're lucky enough to have the Legendary Axe, then you might have huge value in the coming weeks considering how much carry potential Rhett Paladins have, especially in mid to high range keys. The strength of Rhett Paladin is obviously much more than just damage, and with some of the best utility in the game, Rhett has the ability to scale high with player skill. Feral Druid is in a similar situation, offering strong utility and control, and was another spec who got some pretty substantial damage increases to core rotational abilities. But with that said, we're still hesitating to move Feral up a tier, but will be another spec to monitor in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, slotting Feral into groups in higher keys is a bit difficult given the current strength of both Resto and Boomy. As a standalone spec, however, Feral will continue to have value, especially in groups that can benefit from uncapped AoE. Unfortunately, we will be moving two specs down, one of them being Assassination Rogue, dropping to the B tier for this update. At the start of the season, we were pretty impressed with Assassination Rogue damage, and a few players were pushing it to impressive ratings. Now though, it's clear that Asa Rogue suffers from a pretty big problem that makes it a bit less friendly to play in most groups. The need to re-stealth can make the spec feel a bit clunky, and even a bit annoying on spiteful weeks, or with tanks that like to press W, which is one reason why Outlaw is still reigning supreme. Outlaw Rogue is less reliant on restealths and is just better at dealing consistent damage. Also, Outlaw is just a tankier spec overall thanks to the synergy between elusiveness and float like a butterfly, which gives CDR on evasion, allowing for high uptime on 20% damage reduction to all sources. Before we wrap up melee, we have a quick note on Enhancement Shaman. This is a spec that our consultants advise us to move down to the B tier because, as a wise man once said, Enhancement Shaman is good until it is dead. In higher key levels where damage is more lethal, we can see an argument for enhancement moving down a tier, but for the majority of players, enhance is still a solid option in many ways. Of course, shamans bring great interrupts and some solid utility and have great damage even if it's capped on bigger pulls. So we want to know what you think. Where would you place enhancement shaman? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we have our updated rankings for Season 3. As you probably know by now, Havoc and Outlaw are absolutely crushing the meta. The 10.2 reworks are still working wonders for these classes as a whole, and as we explained earlier, Unholy DK is currently our wildcard pick since it seems to have the potential for high keys and brings one of the best externals for this season's one-shots. While we didn't cover them in a full breakdown, Arms Warriors, Frost DKs, and Survival Hunters also got some buffs, but we highly doubt they are enough to bump any one of these specs up a tier. Moving on to tanks and healers, business is still as usual for the most part. Vengeance Demon Hunters are probably the best overall tank in the meta, especially at higher keys, since their impressive damage, survivability, and control allow it to carry on much bigger pulls. And of course, Chaos Brand debuff is an amazing asset considering that most groups are playing double caster at the highest ratings. On the flip side, Prot Paladins are just a great safety pick and a solid addition to any group. Between both of the meta tanks, it's hard to say what spec is better since they both have unique advantages in the tanking meta. Tank balance might not be the best at the highest end, but for most keys, every tank is pretty competitive. Guardian Druids still seem to be slacking the hardest, but are able to push very high key levels. Prot Warriors and Blood DKs did see some minor buffs in the patch, but once again, we doubt these will have any meaningful impact on their tier list placement. On the healing side, the big three are still Mistweaver Monk, Disc Priest, and Resto Druid, with Monk taking a slight lead in the competition for rank 1 in recent weeks. Holy Paladin was one healer to get buffs in recent hotfixes, which oddly enough targeted their damage output. Ask any Paladin main and they will tell you that this is a somewhat weird change considering healing output is their main concern. If these problems are addressed, we could definitely see Holy Paladin joining the big three. Anytime Paladin is able to heal and do damage, then it's in a really good place, but right now it doesn't bring the output needed for the highest keys, but is still a really great option overall. Resto Shaman is in a very similar spot, getting some single target damage buffs with a flat overall healing increase. Seeing bigger single target damage is really practical as a healer since it means going through bosses much quicker. But once again, we are going to be conservative here, keeping Shaman on the A tier, right below the big three. The last healer to see major changes in recent tuning was Holy Priest, who saw a mix of damage and healing increases. Once again, we have our doubts that this will change the position of Holy Priest in our tier list given the relative power of Disc, who doesn't have to make the choice to damage or heal. And now to wrap things up, let's cover the remaining two healers that saw changes a few weeks ago in the 10.2.5 patch. 
Mistweaver was one of the few specs to actually get changes in the recent patch, seeing a 5% stamina buff during Ancient Teachings, and a new interaction between Thunder Focus T and Expel Harm, which creates a shield for around 200k damage for every 30 seconds. Preservation of Ochres also got some quality of life buffs centered around Reversion, which increased mana costs to spells sprinkled in. These changes should make Preservation feel a bit stronger against Rot damage, but are likely more helpful in Raid compared to Mythic Plus. Because of this, our consultants doubt that these buffs are enough to bump Preservation up to the S tier, but they definitely help make the spec feel more competitive. So despite there being a few healer changes in the 10.2.5 patch and recent tuning, our healer list is exactly the same. Although we didn't cover them with a full breakdown, Resto Druids got some buffs from recent tuning in the form of reduced mana costs on key spells and are remaining on the S tier once more. Max had a video a few weeks ago explaining that healer balance is actually really good this season, since the meta is not dominated by a single spec, but instead shared among three. Do you agree with this take? Let us know in the comments below and tell us what balance changes you would like to see this patch. And while you're doing that, if you're looking to rank up fast this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com using the links below, where you can check out all of our amazing class courses and dungeon guides, and learn more about our rank up guarantee, which promises you will gain at least 500 IO while using our guides. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, we hope you are having a great start to the year, see you soon.